So uh, you were kind of digging on the TS1 vibes then, Josh, at the moment. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm really digging it. Uh, actually, I finally talked Bill and Eli in, into making me a TS1 kind of exactly the way I've wanted for a long time. I've had right. some crazy ideas, but it's, man, this amp sounds killer. And, uh, you know, you and I both have listened to a lot of guitar players over the years who play amps in the similar. No idea thing. you're talking don't, about. Don't know what I'm speaking no. about. Yeah, well, some, <laughs> some really good guitar players and some bad ones play these amps. And um, I've gotten to play a lot of, a lot of them over the years, two rocks and real ones, and mm -hmm. and uh, I've kind of found a way to dial them in. They don't work for everything, but man, there's just certain things that they do better than any amp right. ever, and this is by far one of the best ones I've ever played. In fact, I got that's exactly what I got to say about the TS1, because they're not my style of amp. As much as many of my favorite players have yeah. used them, I've never got on with that the overdrive style yeah. amp, you know? Um, and this one I like, and I can plug into it and not go, oh, I just wish I had a Super Reverb. Well, yeah. Or, you know, which is what has happened, because there's the myth of them and the, the whole idea that you, you know, like, and then it, I've always, it, even with the real ones, I've, for me, I've been like, this isn't for me. And yet I could take this out, and I have done on a couple of Bill's prototypes, mm -hmm. taken it out and done a gig on it and loved it. You know? Well, so, it was, you know, we're around the same age. It was a mythical yeah. thing, you know, to f to one day get to plug into one of these things. Every yeah. all these there's common thread when you look at all these players. Wait, they're all using this amplifier, yeah, this yeah. crazy amplifier that you can't get anywhere. Yeah. And uh, so when I first did start to play through them, of course I was floored. But then when you take them to a gig, when you come from where we come from, playing Fender amps mm -hmm. and supers, non masters, it could be daunting. And they're different. They don't excel at everything. They don't pick pedals the way that classic reverb did. Right, right. You know what I mean? They don't feel like that. They're really in your face, yeah. but they're super dynamic, yeah. and there's just certain things they do better than any amp that's ever, ever yeah, existed. Yeah, there's a little bit of an art to getting the best out of them, I think. There it's is. A ref it's refined thing. But this one, for me, not being even that far, that good at the art of getting something out of an overdrive amp, this one is really easy to work with. Like We're that, using the know? overdrive channel? When we yeah, I did channel? my usual little bit of boost from my um, Royal Blue down there. And then when, always for me, it's always like with the strap thing, trying to get the bridge pickup to keep, carry the same weight as the neck pickup does. It's yeah. like that's the uphill battle That's a strat with thing, the yeah. strap. So I'm always looking for a beer, another pedal, or in this case, I just switched to the lead channel and then I think I was on bypass when I'm getting to the really okay, so little, you were bypassed, the little notes all right. as well. So I just had nothing other than the amp wide open and a bit of this... Uh, the time reverb going on. Okay, see, I, I didn't have anything going on from the pedal board. I had a slap going. Right. But uh, everything, the, all the dirt was from the amp. Yeah, right. Everything. So I was on the, the dirty channel. And for me, it's always been the way to get these amps to sound and feel the way that everybody really wants them to feel mm -hmm. is to, to wrap your head around the cascade and gain. Yeah, so you're thing. feeding it right. Yeah, yeah because the first volume control is the key. It feeds into everything else. Yeah. So I found when you can get this volume control above five, really six seems to be my magic number, the dirty takes off where the lead started, yeah. you know, where the clean ended. And it's just the right, that bloom that everyone's looking for. That's, and that's, that's a big part of it. Where I've, where, sometimes where I've struggled with, the, with it before, of feeling like the clean's too clean, and the dirty is too dirty, but again, with this, this with the, the latest TS ones, it's it is a continuation. And I, because I don't want to have two sounds. I want, like we were talking about earlier with the other amp. Yeah. I want everything to be a yeah. continuation of the sound of my guitar. So well, this it's like, uh, does you're that right well. though. The clean on this is a different clean than what your what yeah. the classic reverb was. Yeah. It, it's it's more hi-fi. Yeah. It has way deeper low. Right. You know, it's just a different sound. It's not breaking up, you know what I mean? But I can uh, I can kind of lean on it and get still a bit of Texas out of it. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but For man, me, you know. check it out. Like if I turn this ma the, yeah. the clean volume down to three and keep the master where it was. That sounds great because we're playing loud and it's killer. Yeah. But if I get it up to six, it gets way more dynamic. Yeah, 
that's where it comes to life, really, isn't it? It, yeah. it really is. Without where it comes being to much life. dirtier, like it's not falling apart. Dirty, no, and that's so. where it finally starts to give a little bit, yeah. so that when you go to the overdrive, they connect, right. like in a in a musical way. There and, you go. And then the switches is. I find the bright switch depends on speaker for sure. So mm -hmm. this cabinet actually has my speakers in it, the Eminence JS's, which are a little dark. So right. I've got the bright switch on. I've got the mid switch off. I almost always have the mid switch off, and that's because I come from blackface fender. Right. So right. I don't want. I'm not a tweed guy. I don't want super mid forward. And the, the lead channel on this already pumps mids a little bit, you know. Uh, and then the rock switch almost always in in rock jazz. So that sounds like. Here's the jazz EQ. Makes you want to go. Doesn't it sound so jazzy? It's just way less it? gain. It Sounds actually it? sounds great, though. Sounds great. Instant jazz, just instant jazz. jazz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got the same reverb you've got going yeah, to free the tone in the loop. So when I switch to the lead channel, I tend to, if you can get the volume up past six, you can keep the, the gain on the lead channel down, right. below half, but then keep the volume of the lead channel way up. So then you're avoiding that compression too you're much, in, right? Yeah, because it, it has, comp this amp yeah. has compression. So if I switch to the lead channel right now, it kind of takes off. That's, well, that's the tone everybody's chasing with that amp, for mm -hmm. sure. You know, and the key is gain staging it the right way, for sure. I think you sound great with that kind of amp, man. That's really great. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great sounding amp, man. I wish I could carry three, because there's like, I want the blackface thing. I want yeah. this, I want this. And they all have, the, yeah, that's the thing about gear anyways. They all have things that they do.